Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me first thank, thank you and the, mem and the cabinet staff, Mr. Speaker, for you for conducting this, this budget session and the cabinet staff for adding some pleasantries to our diet. Pa to the parliament staff. Um, I must see that we were very, we were very pleased, Mr. Speaker, to, to, to the additions to, to our, our they, they took care of our health, tried to keep us healthy, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Parliamentary staff. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I really want to start by thanking my colleagues. You see, Mr. Speaker, in this business of politics, I always see the people, they see us or they see you dressed in suits on television, and it appears as if it's a land, it's a life of glamour, a life of a dream life, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the politics has become, and I'm sure the member for Cassius North will agree with me, the politics has become very different to how it was when I started, Mr. Speaker. It has become a politics of bitterness, a politics of misinformation, a politics of slander, a politics of lies, a politics of envy, a politics of hatred, Mr. Speaker. And you have to have the, the fortitude, and you have to have the guts and the conviction to be able to stay the course and to remain, to remain focused, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the last two, two and a half to three years, since we've become the government of St. Lucia, since we've administered St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, there has never been a period where there's been so much hatred and so much lies and anger, Mr. Speaker, in the politics of St. Lucia. And the misinformation is so deep that it is useless. Simple things that can be proven, things that can be proven, that you need no reason to doubt it, Mr. Speaker, I doubt it. It's a matter of the truth being what you perceive it to be and what the truth really is, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I start on the CIP program or the CIP issue that happened a few weeks ago. Mr. Speaker, for an opposition to deliberately go out to stop a country from developing its people in terms of housing, in terms of infrastructure, all because they are not involved or they're not in government is almost a call of treason, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I saw my, I saw the, my name and name the minister for from the minister for the CIP being dragged in we being called to Washington. Mr. Speaker, do you know the person that they, accused, they said wants me to come to Washington to speak to him? Mr. Speaker, you know he's a fraudster? He's a Mr. Speaker, he's a fraudster. But we will join with fraudsters. We will join with anybody just because the United Workers' Party are not in government in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there has not been one word no one has ever said that St. Lucia's CIP program, in terms of the due diligence, has come into disrepute. Mr. Speaker, the due diligence in our program happens at several stations, even at the level of the bank with the New York customer and your source of funds situation, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the opposition ties put all kind of things together, things I've never heard about. Things, I mean, nefarious characters. Um, some guy called, 
said, I must come to Washington for him to show me what he has. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me tell you a story about this guy. The guy that they are talking about is a guy who was sued by the former prime minister of St. Kitts. He was a guy who was sued by the former prime minister. And you know who the former prime minister of St. Kitts, who his friend is. You know who his friend is. You know who, who came here to campaign, who came to here to address dinners, but they will discard all their friends just because they want to see this country down. They want to burn the house to kill a rat, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the solution doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to anybody in this, in this honorable house. It doesn't belong to the opposition. It belongs to the people of St. Lucia. And when St. Lucia does well, everybody does well collectively. Regardless of who is in government, Mr. Speaker, the country will progress. Everybody, when there's an increase in, in employment, the employer doesn't say, if you are UWP no employing you, or if you are labor and employing you, he employs everybody because he wants workers, Mr. Speaker. When there is a decrease in crime, the criminal doesn't say that he will not do what he has to do because you are labor, you are UWP. The criminal is a criminal. So, Mr. Speaker, why are we so selfish? Why are we so consumed with envy and hatred? That we want to destroy our country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, we are not saying that there should be no criticism. We are in a democratic country. Criticism is part of the culture of our democracy. We need opposition. We need people to say, give an alternative view. We need that. That is why the system is configured, Mr. Speaker. It's configured to have a government and an opposition. We are not arrogant to say to the opposition that they've lost their right to speak. We're not arrogant, Mr. Speaker, to say, I don't listen to them, I let the dogs back. We don't see that, Mr. Speaker. All we are saying is that let us have a discussion. Let us sit down and let us discuss the future of our country. Let us see how we can make our country better. Let us see if we can get the systems to work properly. Let us get together on some simple issues of crime, Mr. Speaker. The opposition, Mr. Speaker, believes that when there is an increase of murders in this country, the government will suffer. So when the, there's a criminal commits murder, the Mr. National Security must resign. The Minister of National Security took the gun, he put it in the criminal's hand, and he said, go and commit a murder. What is the relationship between gang warfare and the Minister of National Security? What is the relationship between we trying to have some, some social interventions to help in the situation as it regards gangs and the Minister of National Security? Mr. Speaker, this government, has done more, both in terms of enforcement, in terms of giving the police the resources that they need, and in terms of social actions to help reduce the scourge of crime. We appointed a Minister of Crime Prevention, Mr. Speaker. Why did they appoint a Minister of Crime Prevention? We appointed the Minister of Crime Prevention so he could work with all he could work with all the bodies involved in helping to assist in the crime struggle. So he could coordinate it, Mr. Speaker, because of his experience, because of his youthfulness, because he can speak the language of the young people. And we hope, we hope that we hoped that he could put it together so we could see if he could help in this scourge that's affecting the entire Caribbean, Mr. Speaker. No. You criticize him. You criticize him, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, let me tell you what keep, keeps me going. What keeps me going 
is first of all the support of the people of Kashmir East. And the people of Kashmir East, Mr. Speaker, have shown that they have confidence in me and they have confidence in what I try to do for them. Let me tell you what else keeps me going, Mr. Speaker. What else keeps me going, and I know that creates a lot of confusion when I say it, is the way my parents brought me up. They brought me up with a sense of caring, with a sense of neighborliness, with a sense of wanting to help my fellow man, with a sense of compassion, Mr. Speaker, and with a sense of love, Mr. Speaker. So sometimes I feel sorry for my detractors. Mr. Speaker, I can look to you in your face and tell you, sometimes I feel sorry for my detractors. When I see what they write, when I see the hatred that comes through their veins and the envy and the venom and the lies, Mr. Speaker, I feel sorry. I say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What keeps me going, Mr. Speaker, is the men and women in this room and the men and women. <coughs> because, Mr. Speaker, at Cabinet, I see the passion, I see the fervor, I see the desire to do well. I see men and women wanting their constituency almost coming to this room on Mondays and say, I want to do that for my constituency. I see the gentle banter, Mr. Speaker. I see the fight for Austin Road. I see... Mr. Speaker, I see, it, I see the member for Souffre, the passion for Souffre, Mr. Speaker. That keeps me going. And you know what else keeps me going, Mr. Speaker? The men and women of the St. Lucia Labour Party. <clears throat> because, Mr. Speaker, this party is a party of George Charles. And George Charles's role in the history of St. Lucia has not yet been fully disclosed to the young people of this country, Mr. Speaker. And when this Labour Party passes a minimum wage bill, when this party suggests a minimum and livable wage for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, it's out of our historical conviction, out of the history that says the working class must be better off that one generation must be better than another. That's what keeps the Labour Party going. Not frills and balls and, 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 and gowns and, 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 and bluff and fluff. It's, and not all these gestures, Mr. Speaker, like lying down in the back of a pickup and these, these, these baseless, um, these, these Base that means just to show I'm like you. You don't have to show if you like the people. The people know when you are like them. So, Mr. Speaker, this philosophical underpinning of this party that says that workers must get a, a livable wage, Mr. Speaker, is deep down in the roots of the party that I happen to lead now, Mr. Speaker. And when I move on, Mr. Speaker, the people, or the person who will take the leadership of this party, when I'm gone, if I'm not alive, I will pull his legs <laughs> or her legs. <clears throat> if that philosophy, if that love for workers, if, that, if they try to compromise George Charles's party, if I'm dead, I hate the PAO. Because, Mr. Speaker, this party, the party that brought forward the Kenny Antonys, the party that made the George Odlums, 
for most of his life. The party that, until he lost his way, the Peter Joseph's. The party that created the Alan Louise's and the Kenneth Foster's, Mr. Speaker. That is the party. And that is the party. The party that understands, Mr. Speaker, that the working, that the young people of this country, and as I said, my budget address, we don't have to boast about what we did for young people. The history is clear. We had a party of universal secondary school education. We had a party of universal primary school education. And now we had a party of the first generation scholarships for the people of this country. That's what our party is about. That's what our party is about, Mr. Speaker. So we don't have to. These are facts. Things that can't be denied, Mr. Speaker. We are the party that believes in human dignity. We are the party that believes that one generation must be better off than another, Mr. Speaker. And when I hear people talk about subsidies, Mr. Speaker, let me give you an example, Mr. Speaker. I heard the member for sure that talk about we reduce subsidies. Mr. Speaker, in 2021, subsidies on LPG gas was $8.4 million. In 2022, it was $13.6 million. Subsidy on LPG gas. In 2023, it was 8 million, Mr. Speaker, on LPG gas. Because we know the 22 pound and the 20 pound cent of gas, Mr. Speaker. Because we know that if we allow the market forces to take over, Mr. Speaker, many people will not be able to buy gas, or their preferences will have to be different, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mr. Speaker, Talk about a party for conscience, Mr. Speaker. The subsidy on sugar and flour, Mr. Speaker, for 2021-22, listen carefully, was $524,000. In 2022-23, it was $15 million, Mr. Speaker. $15 million, the subsidy on flour, sugar, and rice, Mr. Speaker. $15 million. In 2023-24, it was $11 million, Mr. Speaker. And we projected to be $12 million in this fiscal year. That's what the Labour Party is about. So, Mr. Speaker, when you had these baseless claims of reductions in subsidies. Mr. Speaker, you know, and these facts are easy to find, but we continue to lie, continue to peddle the misinformation, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday I heard <clears throat> that growth in the economy is because of tax revenue. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let us be logical. If people have no money, how do they pay tax? If there is no money, how do you pay tax? If the merchants did not get their goods sold, why would they import it? I mean, these are simple things. So when you talk about, for you not to admit that this country is experiencing an unprecedented improvement in the economic atmosphere in the country. And you say it is due to taxation, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I mean, it's a straight case. But you're not saying that the money supply is highest than it's ever been? $2.4 billion, M1, $2.4 billion, that's because of taxation? You're not saying that the reserves at the ECCB is $1 billion because of taxation, Mr. Speaker? You're not saying that the latest survey by the, from, by the business people in this country has shown that business confidence has never been at its highest because of taxation? You're not saying that the unemployment rate in this country is the lowest it has been for the decade because of taxation, Mr. Speaker? What taxation? The member 
Fancy can is made a point. St. Lucia's tax to GDP ratio is about 23% for the OECD. It's 34% for some countries in the OECD. But you still, in the face of all these facts, you're still talking about, about taxation, Mr. Speaker. I mean, but it goes further. It goes further to the blatant lies and misinformation. The member for Schozel said that he saw no tender for St. Jude's. <laughs> imagine, imagine, Mr. Speaker, the UWP talking about tender for projects. A government that was building an airport on a bill as you go, do that, I'll pay you. Put the other piece, I'll pay you. Finance Minister, to be fair to him, what he did say was, you said it was out for tender. And then you subsequently said you were speaking of the contractor. So he wanted clarification. Okay. I I'll think the Deputy Prime Minister tried to explain to him different phases. Yeah. But I don't think he said it was not put out to tender. Okay. Mr. Speaker, but out of the abundance of caution, I will show you where it was put out to tender, Mr. Speaker. But before I show you that, I want to show you, Mr. Speaker, the work that has been going on at St. Jude. And you will not see any structure that where water is leaking. Mr. Speaker, let's have a look at what's happening at St. Jude, Mr. Speaker. The exterior, that's the interior, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that is what's happening at St. Jude, Mr. Speaker, as we speak, Mr. Speaker. And I'm assured that the four buildings, Mr. Speaker, that the work is happening now, Mr. Speaker, will be completed before July this year, Mr. Speaker. Four buildings. Well, Mr. Speaker, out of the abundance of caution. I brought for you the tender documents, Mr. Speaker, for the St. Jude Hospital. I brought for you the tender documents, Mr. Speaker. So when people say 
these, that misinformation. And here it goes, Mr. Speaker. Tender document for procurement of works. Procurement of St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. Employer, Ministry of Department of Economic Development on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, country St. Lucia, source of funds, SFD, Saudi Fund for Development, issued on January the 5th. That is the tender document for the works, Mr. Speaker. The other one, Mr. Speaker, is the tender document for the consultants. Project St. Jude Reconstruction, Mr. Speaker, issued on 5th January 2024. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the two tender documents, public tender for St. Jude Hospital, the two documents, Mr. Speaker. So, when I want to make it clear, Mr. Speaker, that the idea that the work at St. The work at St. Jude on the remainder of the buildings are not being tendered for, Mr. Speaker, is absolutely false. The work on the current buildings, Mr. Speaker, will not, did not go out in public tender because of where the work was at the moment, where the work was at the time, Mr. Speaker. So it was easier, it was more convenient, Mr. Speaker, to have an internal assessment, an internal evaluation, and then award, a contract was awarded for the work on the four buildings. But the remainder of the work, Mr. Speaker, it, go, it went out for public tender, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, you heard the story about Sir George Odlum, George, the George Odlum Stadium. Why would the opposition not want George Odlum Stadium to be repaired? I mean, wh what, what kind of opposition would not want George Odlum Stadium to be repaired? So they make a big fuss. Oh, $2.5 million, $2 million for consultancies, and $500,000. I mean, Mr. Speaker, that level of, of, of baseless, I don't want to say the word I want to say. Mr. Speaker, the so $2 million is for the consultancy work on the stadium, Mr. Speaker and it's for supervision of the construction work. So it was up, uploaded at the front of the contract because there is no cost yet for the, for the contract. So you have to have the consultants to evaluate the tenders, etc., to to go to go to the tenders board, Mr. Speaker. So you have to have the consultancy, the consultancy first. And the $500,000 is to start the work of demolishing, cleaning, and clearing the, the, the site, Mr. Speaker, for construction. But the opposition finds something wrong with that, Mr. Speaker. The opposition complains. Mr. Speaker, the, the government of St. Lucia, we decided that in terms of our crime fighting, Mr. Speaker, we have to do it two stages. Number one, we must create an enabling environment for young people to be able to get jobs if they want, for young people to be able to have their talents, for young people to get involved in the creative industries, as the minister said, for young people to, be get, to get involved in tourism, for young people to be able to get involved in times in lines of economic activity that they like. So we created the youth economy, but why are we doing that? We are doing something in, in, in culture, we are doing something in tourism, we're doing something in education, so you can give young people a reason to want to do better in the country, create their neighboring environment for young people. And we decided that we'll also have some social interference, some social interventions. So at SSDF, you have acts, then you have a number of, of of people, Mr. Speaker, who are involved in crime, who have some ideas, the government has funded them. It's not my style to come and say who we funded and what we gave them, but they know themselves, they know the government assisted them, they know that uh, my, my, my office is ready to speak to them at any time. We have a minister now to deal with them. We, we, we gave them monetary, monetary support to get involved in this crime intervention in, in, in intervention efforts. We give them some, some monetary support. But why do you Mr. Speaker? We have to give the police resources. 
I mean, the member for Castries sent him. I was right, Mr. Speaker. You cannot resource the police by fundraising. You have to resource the police if tangible means, Mr. Speaker. And it was, I was very surprised to hear that people who know better would go in public and talk about police equipment, Mr. Speaker. This is sad. It just shows you when you are focused on the wrong things, how you lose, you lose your, your, your focus. Because if you are focused, Mr. Speaker, you don't tell the public what's the weakness of your police equipment. So you're telling criminals that the police have no equipment X, Y, Z, saying that to criminals? If you love the police, if you love law enforcement, you will come pitch quietly and you say to the powers that be, to the commissioner, commissioner, do you know that we need X, Y, Z? But with the intention to harm and the intention to make the government look bad, you go in public and you, pro and you proclaim the, about the police equipment, Mr. Speaker, and you're not putting the police at risk. When you're telling the criminals what the police don't have, but Mr. Speaker, we've spent money on police equipment, we've spent money on ammunition. Mr. Speaker, we are still suffering from the lay law, which is not created by us. We're still suffering for that. They've been created. We're suffering for that, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, so we said that we'd give the police better working conditions, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, that again is our history. In 1997, we were the ones who built the Marigold Police Station. We were the ones who built the Marsha Police Station. We were the ones to, to build the Miku Police Station. We were the ones to build the Denry Police Station. We were the ones to build the Richmond Police Station. That is our history. So what are we doing now? We are building a brand new, before again, Mr. Speaker, in Grosley. When the police were in Grosile, Mr. Speaker, we had a tour of that police station. And Mr. Speaker, I had to apologize to the police for having them work in these kind of conditions, Mr. Speaker. And for five years, the government played footsie. Move it here, take it there. Move the station here, take it there. Rent somebody building, take it away. And for five years, and they blame COVID. There was two years before COVID, and two years after COVID. Here is what we're doing for the police, Mr. Speaker. The police Northern headquarters. Here is where we are, Mr. Speaker. That's where we are, Mr. Speaker, with the Northern Police Headquarters. That's where we are, Mr. Speaker. And you know, Mr. Speaker, in there, you have a gym, you have a tennis court, because you want our policemen to be fit. And that is just the first stage. The second stage is a dormitory with state-of-the-art dormitory for the police in this country, because we appreciate what they do, Mr. Speaker, and they want to get in the better conditions to work under, Mr. Speaker. But that's how we are. That's how we are. That's our history. That's our history. We don't get involved in, in interference, who is, must be corporal, transfer this, transfer. We don't get involved in that, Mr. Speaker. We don't. That's not how we are. That's not us. That's not the Labour Party. That's a party that, 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 that believes in meritocracy. That's a party that believes in one generation doing better than the other. That's how we are. Mr. Speaker, you heard about the year of infrastructure and housing, Mr. Speaker. But again, Mr. Speaker, they will not understand what this party stands for when it comes to housing. This is why they wanted us to break contracts so we could not get houses for the people of this country. 
But Mr. Speaker, we believe that every human being, as far as possible, should have comfortable surroundings in which they must live, Mr. Speaker. But again, that is how we are. Because we started doing work where people live. We were the party that, be, that started the SSDF. Before it was SSDF, it was Poverty Reduction Fund. We were the party that started the STEP program. That's, the, that's how we are. We are the party that started the NICE program. Mr. Speaker, we are the party that started the home care for elderly people to have to be lonely and they need some help. We, and this year, we're going to be expanding the home care program, Mr. Speaker. That's how, that is how we are. That's how we are, Mr. Speaker. So no matter how they try to pin these lies on us, it cannot stick because the people understand, Mr. Speaker. That's how we are. So what, what do we do? We say that we have to help people at all stages of improving their housing stock. So the first thing that we do is that we say we're going to have a house repair program where people who have their houses in a particular condition, we're going to try to help them to repair it. They ridicule it. They ridicule it. They ridicule it, Mr. Speaker, because they don't understand what it means to a man when rain is falling and rain is falling and his house is getting wet and he has to put a bucket in his house to collect water when you give them 12 sheets of galvanized. They don't understand how you've changed that guy's life. They don't, they don't understand, Mr. Speaker, or some of them pretend not to remember. They either don't understand, some of them don't understand genuinely. I must agree. Some of them don't understand. That's not in their, that's not in their life at all. But some others understand, but they choose not to remember because they don't want Philip J. Pierre to be prime minister. So they, they choose not to remember. They choose not to remember what it means to grow up in a house. <clears throat> they choose not to remember. They choose not to remember, Mr. Speaker. So what did we do? We started and we said we would repair, help repair these people's houses, Mr. Speaker. So then we're taking it the next step. We said we'd give them land. So the minister involved in land rationalization, in giving people a piece of land to build a house. Because, Mr. Speaker, nobody wants to squat. People want to have a piece of land that they call their own, Mr. Speaker. No matter where it is, they want it called their own. They don't, have, they, they don't want a view. They don't want to live where you can get a view. They don't want that. All they want to have is a piece of land where they can put their house and they can build up their children that's all. So what are we doing? We're getting involved in land rationalization. We're getting involved in <clears throat> making proud a statutory board so we can do more of that, Mr. Speaker. The people of Bagatelle are waiting for that, Mr. Speaker. That's how we are. But why is we doing that, Mr. Speaker? <clears throat> we are saying that if you want a mortgage, and Mr. Speaker, the people who take these things for granted they don't know what it means, Mr. Speaker, when somebody wants to improve their status in life, but they just can't afford it, Mr. Speaker, because the system is pulling them down. They don't understand that. And those who understand it prefer not to, not to, to play. They don't understand it. So what did he say? We said that if you go to the bank for a mortgage of $400, $400,000 or less, we are going to remove all the stamp duty for you, Mr. Speaker. So you will save a few dollars. So you'll save a few dollars, Mr. Speaker. They will save. Now, if you're interested in big land deals, if you're accustomed of renting 
big buildings for hundreds of thousands of dollars every month. That wouldn't mean nothing to you. That doesn't mean nothing to you. Because you, you're in the big league. You, you're in the big league. So your rental every year is hundreds of thousands of dollars you can let in. Pay me, Mr. Speaker. You wouldn't know that what it means to waive the stamp duty on $40,000. You wouldn't know what it means. You would not know. Because you don't feel it. So, Mr. Speaker, we've waived that, Mr. Speaker. And we also say that if you are civil servant, we went, I went, I'd like to say the I, Mr. Speaker. I'm not an I man. This I, I, I thing. We. But I happen to be leading the we. We went to Taiwan, Mr. Speaker. I want to sign the government of Taiwan. And we negotiated 20 million US dollars, principally for housing. So we put it in the development bank, a development bank that they created and they did not capitalize, and we re re recapitalized it, and we are the ones who are making it work because they left it. They created it and they left it. We are the ones who put in capital in that bank. We are the ones who are revitalizing that bank, Mr. Speaker. And I call on that bank not to let the people of St. Lucia down. Don't let us down. Because we are showing confidence in you. Don't let us down, Mr. Speaker. So we put a 20 million US dollars in that bank and say to our civil servants, go in there and you'll get 100% mortgage, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> so if your house costs $250,000, $200,000, the bank is going to lend you all once you meet certain criteria, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> and we're also saying that we'll waive the legal fees. We'll give you a $1,000 credit on the legal fees. What we're doing, Mr. Speaker? We've reduced the stamp duty, given you 100% mortgage, and now we are getting a thousand dollars credit on your legal fees, Mr. Speaker. Why? Because we want you to be better off than your parents were. We want wealth to increase from generation to generation. One generation must be better off than the other one, Mr. Speaker. And how do you do that? By education and by owning a piece of your country. That's how we do it, Mr. Speaker. So I want to urge the civil servants, Mr. Speaker, to make use of that facility in the bank. And I want to tell the bank to let the processes flow so it can happen quicker than people cannot be waiting and waiting and waiting, Mr. Speaker. The money is available. <clears throat> Let's make it happen, Mr. Speaker. The member for Viewport South gave some advice on the land registry, and I'm sure the member for um, Cashish North will tell you that was in progress. Again, the land registry is not. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we are trying to correct the mess that, left, that we were left, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we haven't come to tell you where this country was in 2021, Mr. Speaker. All these men and women here can tell you the state of the ministries that inherited. The state of the ministries that inherited, Mr. Speaker. Talk to the Minister of Sports, he'll tell you about the situation in the Sufra Stadium. Every, the Minister of Education will tell you about the e-books that he inherited that never had neither E on F. <laughs> he'll tell you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Tourism will tell you all about the projects that lights went this way and lights didn't go the other way. He'll tell you all about it, Mr. Speaker. Do not tell the Minister of Health. We'll tell you. There was a comp Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> is that passing strange that we can come here and we can show you work in progress? We can show you hotels being built. We can show you roads being built. And when they came over, they showed us renderings. Renderings, computer pictures. I remember one of them came here and said, you're make a skyscraper in Soufre. <laughs> He had a big set of picture, skyscraper and souffre. And big. And Mr. Speaker, 
He committed a sin that I want to tell all young politicians not to do, Mr. Speaker. When you're in politics, you must understand that there is a sort of, there ought to be a sort of principle among politicians, Mr. Speaker. So when you just reach, you leave your seniors alone. But when you believe that you can come in and go after your seniors in the most venomous way, you've been prompted, give a piece of paper, say it, wait, 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 wait. you never come back inside it. And have you seen the behavior of the member for, for Grosile? He's very placid. He's, he understands, Mr. Speaker. He does not get, although there are no senior there anyhow. But it's about <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, that's what they showed us. Renderings, 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 computer printouts. What do we show? We show work on the hotel. What do we show, Mr. Speaker? We show improvement from one point to another. That's what we show. We don't show renderings. We show reality because that is how we are. We are party of reality. We are party of truth. We are party of conscience. We are party of compassion. We are party of love. That's what we're about, Mr. Speaker. And sometimes our people complain. Why you have this and that? Why you haven't moved that person? Why is that person still there? And what are the person doing there, still, Mr. Speaker? You know what? We believe that we should give everyone a fair chance to contribute to the development of this country. That's what we believe. That's how we are. Member for Chosel talking about the John Compton Dam. You think the member can come and talk about the John Compton Dam? <laughs> and he, talk about, he spoke about he will know international airport and the John Compton Dam, Mr. Speaker. What, Mr. Speaker? The debate is coming from me. Mr. Speaker, you know, they grant charges. You love this, you love that. Wait, wait, Mr. Speaker. But you know, Mr. Speaker, they threaten us. All of us say you love this, you always say we have that. So if you have nothing, what you're afraid of what we have? We have nothing. So let's move on, Mr. Speaker. When we talk about the John Compton Dam. But as the member for Cashew South says, we are going to be talking about the John Compton Dam very soon, Mr. Speaker. Very soon. Mr. Speaker, certain things in Mr. politics... Finance, you have 10 minutes left. Certain things in politics, Mr. Speaker, move your conscience, Mr. Speaker. I never knew that there were people in this country who were living on a pension of $300 a month. A month, yes. $300 a month. That is what they have to maintain themselves every month. $300, Mr. Speaker. There are 2,200 people in this country who get $300 a month for their pension, Mr. Speaker. And you must note it's a contribution. And I see the contributions. Is you have to contribute to your pension, Mr. Speaker. $300. And Mr. Speaker, when I looked further, I found there are people in the government service, about 230 people in the government service, who get pensions of less than $700 a month, Mr. Speaker. There are people who still get in the government service $224 a month as their pension, Mr. Speaker. That's not how we are. That's not how we are, Mr. Speaker. So I immediately, what was within my jurisdiction, and I told the officials in the Ministry of Finance, they, can't, they cannot tell me no, because I don't get involved, I don't believe, I discuss it with, with my officials. I discuss with them, we come to consensus. Because, you see, Mr. Speaker, but because I don't believe in being a dictator and tell them, do this and do that, we discuss it. But there are certain things I stand by, and I said to them, do not tell me no, nobody in the government service will get less than $725 per month pension. Nobody. And from the 1st of August, and that date is significant, Emancipation Day. Very significant, Mr. Speaker, because, you know, 
We want to forget our history. Don't talk about slavery. Don't talk about black, racist. On our history, we want to forget our history. Conveniently, we want to forget our history, Mr. Speaker. First of August is Emancipation Day. And here's what will happen on the first of August. Pensioners in the government service will get no less than $725 per month. <laughs> Pensioners from the NIC will get no less than $500 a month, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> and I'm looking, but that's going to have to have discussions with the NIC. That's the difference. We have to have, we have, to have the, the actuaries to look at it. That is how we do our business. We don't make poor nonsense before we talk to people. We talk to them, Mr. Speaker, and I'm looking to see if we can increase that $500 a month at some other point. But as the employment rate in St. Lucia is, in, is improving, Mr. Speaker, at the end of December this year, 2023, NIC had the most registered contributors in the history of the NIC, Mr. Speaker. And they'll tell you, because of taxation, because of taxation, more people employed because of taxation. So, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> We, we believe that this budget is the foundation of improvement in the quality of life for the majority of people in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. But we, not, we won't stop there. We will not stop there, Mr. Speaker. There are certain things that we have to improve. We have to improve on our productivity. We have to improve on our work ethic. But most of all, Mr. Speaker, we have to improve on our humanity, Mr. Speaker. We can't let politicians divide us, Mr. Speaker. We can't let selfishness and greed and anger and hatred. What they want to create in this country is a country where everybody is angry. They want to create an environment where nobody trusts each other. They want to create an environment where you look at everything in suspicion, everything you say on a talk show, suspicion, Mr. Speaker. They don't want to create a country that has an objective. They don't want to create a country where everybody is moving forward together for the benefit of all. They don't do that. They don't want to collect. They want to create a country for the few and not for the many. And that's what this little party will stand for me, Mr. Speaker, and I'll say to them, I'll say to them, Mr. Speaker, if you believe mepui, criticisms, attacks on my family, attacks on my daughter, attacks on whoever you want, attacks on my colleagues, trying to create division between me and my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, that will not work. <clears throat> I know myself, my colleagues know me. I know myself, I'm comfortable in being myself, Mr. Speaker. I'm very comfortable. I'm a comfortable guy. My focus is to improve the quality of life of the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. My focus is for us to get more J.Q. Charles's, more Air Valmors, more Elwin Marshalls, indigenous business people, Mr. Speaker. Indigenous business people who can rise to the highest level of commercial activity in the country. That's my focus. For, biz, for young businessmen to be able to do like J.Q. and Valmore and, ex and expand and grow, Mr. Speaker. That's what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in, Mr. Speaker, is for every house to have a child who went to university, Mr. Speaker. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in the, 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 the frivolous nonsense that, 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 that they write on, on, on whether it, or Facebook or whatever, Mr. Speaker. That, first of all, I don't read it. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, I am so focused that when I go home tonight, you know what I'm thinking of, Mr. Speaker? You know what I'm thinking of, Mr. Speaker? I'm thinking of CDP on Monday.
this is good. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. That's what, Mr. Speaker, I am thinking of how I can get these processes going further, Mr. Speaker, how I can get at the rate of implementation to increase, Mr. Speaker, how I can get these projects on the road. Next month, we have a series of sword turning ceremonies, Mr. Speaker. But as I've said to the minister to my colleagues, I had turning no sword in the thing I'm building. <laughs> you understand? I am firm on that. I am not turning any sword if the not, it's not going to be built. I know in this business of bluff and fluff, Mr. Speaker, we turn the sword for the House of Justice downtown, Mr. Speaker. And I can assure you, I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, by next month, these buildings are going to begin to, to go down by next month. Because I'm not in the business of bluff, Mr. Speaker. I'm, Mr. Speaker, I'm not in the business of, 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 of renderings and showmanship and nonsense and, and all kind of things that you know will never happen. So many islands and pull of the Caribbean and foolishness. So, guns and Mr. Speaker, I'm in the business of reality, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that this economy is on a solid foundation, Mr. Speaker. But we have not arrived as yet, Mr. Speaker, because there are some serious downside risks. And I'm speaking about one of the main, the most important ones, is the weather patterns in this country. We've heard about the drought, and, I had the, and they're blaming me for the drought. I caused rain not to fall. I, I mean, the member for, 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 for Cassius North, I'd have to defend him, Mr. Speaker, he, he, he the old soldier. He made a point, <clears throat> which anybody can understand. He says, listen to me, a gallon of, a gallon of, of water is cheaper. Of, of, what you said, a pint of beer is more expensive than a gallon of water. Let me <clears throat> no, I mean, this, this is a simple statement. That, that was a big story, headlines, and, and headlines, and king. <laughs> huh? Exactly, Mr. But that, that's why I made a point. I made a point the, the, the other day that you should eat what you grow and grow what you eat. Big story, public, grow what you eat. Big story. Yeah? I, mean, I made a point that Martinique is part of Europe. Big story. And Mr. Speaker, that's where we are. That's the kind of opposition we have to deal with, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we are going to remain focused on the development of this country. We want this country to be better off next year than it was that is this year, Mr. Speaker. But there are some downside risks. And I want to urge St. Lucians, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> the little things that they can do to help, like, Mr. Speaker, putting garbage in the waterways, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I know you want contract, but when you throw rubbish and old fridge and old stove in the river, Mr. Speaker, just to be paid to take it out, Mr. Speaker, you are damaging, you are creating issues. I want each of us, Mr. Speaker, the hurricane season is coming. It's not a matter of if, it's when. We have to take our own precautions, Mr. Speaker. We have to do the little things we can do. Don't depend on the government and everything. The little things, clear the drain by your home. Do these little things, Mr. Speaker, because climate change, or weather, some people don't want to say climate change, weather patterns, we can get up one morning and find all our plans are gone because of one hurricane, Mr. Speaker. And I want to congratulate the, the Minister for the Environment because, Mr. Speaker, he's taken his role extremely seriously, Mr. Speaker. And when you tell people about loss of, loss of damage and adaptation and mitigation, little things we can do, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge people of St. Lucia to take these things into consideration, Mr. Speaker. I also want to urge the young people not to allow gangs and gang warfare and six and seven and eight, Mr. Speaker. Don't allow that. Do not allow that to. I know the opposition attacked us because we try to to improve the playing fields in this country. I mean, you write, you write to the IMF, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, you write to the World Bank, the people who just gave us $30 million to help us in our budget, in, in our budgets. 
you write to them. You write to the World Bank to tell them that we, you want just because you want to stop the progress of this country, you write to the World Bank and the IMF to lie about St. Lucia because you want to stop the progress in this country. And you go up there and you take picture with a security guard. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, amidst all that, Mr. Speaker, what keeps me going is when you walk the streets and the ordinary man and woman tells you, Brother, no lie, poo. What keeps me going, Mr. Speaker, is when they tell you, Brother, shame be wed. Now, pray dear by who, Mr. Speaker. That's what keeps me going. What keeps me going, Mr. Speaker, is when an elderly person in a home says to you, Prime Minister, thank you for the home care. The lady who's come to see about me. Thank you for that, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, the when People, Mr. regular people, not people on Facebook, not people who have their own personal hatred and their own personal access to grind, not people consumed with jealousy and envy and hatred. When ordinary people come to you and say, and say to you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it was instructive. We gave the four, the $600 we gave for pensioners, the one-off payment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know the, um, the number of pensioners who said thank you, thank you, thank you for $600, Mr. Speaker? A lady told me, Mr. Speaker, for the 4% from NIC, she says, it's not much, Prime Minister, but it will help me pay my water bill. That's what keeps me going, Mr. Speaker. These, these, these people, Mr. Speaker, that's what keeps me going. And these are the people I am in politics for, Mr. Speaker. I'm in politics for them. I'm in politics for those who have the entrepreneurial talent to make more money and grow big businesses and become global entrepreneurs. But I'm also in the politics for these regular people, Mr. Speaker. I'm in the politics for these young men who said to me, I'm Prime Minister, that computer that, that, that you gave me, I'm using it to do this and that, Mr. Speaker. I say, say thanks to the Ministry of Education. That's what I'm in politics for, Mr. Speaker. I'm in politics to the people, the young men who are waiting for the Minister of Culture to build the pan station in Marsha so they can revive diamond steel, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, that is what I'm in politics for, Mr. Speaker. I'm in politics for that. I'm in politics, Mr. Speaker, when I see people, young people, can make the benefits of tourism, the benefits of tourism, Mr. Speaker, when these benefits can accrue to them and they can make a business for themselves and gain their independence. That's what I'm in politics for, Mr. Speaker. I'm not in politics to, to, to deal with, with, with naysayers and prophets of doom and envy and hatred and greed. I'm not in politics for, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I really want to thank you. I really want to thank the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. I know that the people of St. Lucia understand what we are doing. The people of St. Lucia have trust in what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. And this is manifested, Mr. Speaker, by anything they try, it doesn't seem to work, Mr. Speaker. Demonstrations don't work, doesn't seem to work, Mr. Speaker. So what they do is faceless people, they go behind, they go behind Facebook and they get nasty. That's the only strength. Not the strength in going out and have discussions. Not the strength in having arguments. Not the strength in coming to parliament and discuss. Not the strength. The strength is hiding behind Facebook, hiding behind uh, 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 a, a pseudonym, hiding behind postings on Facebook, and then I greet people. That's the strength. But our strength is among the people. That's where our strength is, among the people, the regular people, Mr. Speaker. And that's where our strength will continue because we'll perform for the people of the Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that we had planned a match for progress, Mr. Speaker. But this match for progress will happen on the third anniversary of our election victory, Mr. Speaker. We are going to have this match for progress in the city of Cassius. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you, I thank everyone, and tell us, let's look forward for a year. Let's look forward for a year of positivity. 
Let's look at for your vaccine, Mr. Speaker. The banana farmers who suffered from the packaging relief is coming. The minister has been instructed to do it immediately, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> immediately. It's not a matter of when he'll do it. He has to do it immediately. Monday. Monday, he needs to come to cabinet with something. Monday. So that means he had to cool out on the weekend. <coughs> because the farmers, because the farmers who suffered, Mr. Speaker, full of, I mean, when I mean, Renero has a problem in the, in, the, in the factory, they blame us. They blame us for machine breaking up Renero. So the minister must resign. I must resign because of the boxing machine mashup. That's, that's where we are, you know. That's where we are. That's where we are, Mr. Speaker. But the farmers are going to get their relief, Mr. Speaker, not in full compensation, but they're going to get some sort of relief, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, the Minister for Sports, the young Minister for Sports, Mr. Speaker, the semi-professional football league, this is revolutionary. But you won't hear about that. You won't hear about it, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for that, Mr. Speaker. I want to invite everybody to the capital of Castries for the opening of jazz. Tickets are on sale. Yeah. <laughs> I want to also t have tell the whole public, all of St. Lucia, jazz is back, Mr. Speaker. I notice the tents are going up for jazz in the square. We've truly taken jazz to the people. That's what we're all about. That is what we are all about, Mr. Speaker. So they know that you can't get a hotel room in this country. They know that you can't get a self-hired car in, in St. Lucia. They know that you can't get a bed and breakfast in San, a bed and breakfast space in St. Lucia. They know all that, Mr. Speaker. So what are you doing? Creating confusion. Creating confusion. Creating confusion. No, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, I want all St. Lucians, enjoy jazz. Love your country. Love St. Lucia and love yourself. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable members,